ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدن الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters we are on this blessed day of juma to finish up one of the obligations for us being muslims we take out this time sorry okay. we take out this time from our busy work from our busy life to finish up the obligation so we can be beneficial in the day of judgment and what's coming up after we die the the eternal life that's that's waiting for us so it is very important for us to remind ourselves of our final destination where we are destined for which starts from the grave the life in the grave so on that basis the topic for today's khutbah will be to refresh our knowledge about the life in grave the life in the qabr based on quran and authentic hadith so when we say the life in the qabr i don't want you to think that we are talking about something right below the ground where we will be buried after we die we are not talking about something that's happening in that small space although we call it life in qabr it is not exactly the qabr that we are referring to it is it is a whole different world where what we are ta- what we are referring to and how do we say that allah subhanahu wa taala says in surah number 23 verse number 100 bismillah arrahman arrahim wa min waraihim barzahu ila yawmi yubathun the translation is and in front of such people there is a barrier till the day when they will be resurrected so there there is actually a barrier between what we are today the life that we are living today and what we are going to live when after we die so that is totally different world it is not necessarily the actual the space inside the qabr so it is there is a barrier although there is a barrier we can't see them and they can see us there is a barrier and allah uses the word barzakh in this so who who goes through this life in qabr is it optional or is it required for all of us to go through it is option it is not optional it is required for every one of us to go through this phase how do we say that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said if anyone could have escaped from the adab of qabr saad would have escaped it so based on this we understand that it is not optional it is a requirement for all of us to go through this life although it is a different life if you are a believer and if it's, it's a different life if you are a non believer and how long is this life going to be inside the qabr it is going to be until the day of resurrection it is going to continue from it is going to be from the moment we die and until the day of resurrection and we get another insight from the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the resurrection the process of resurrection itself prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said an atom in the body will not get destroyed he is referring to an atom that all of us have in our body and that person will be resurrected from that atom and where is this atom this atom is stored in the tail part of that person so we all have a tail it's probably easier in today's context since we might have seen the anatomy of a human being it's easy for us to digest that we all have a tail although it's not showing up like animals we all do have a tail 
which is uh, hiding inside as part, out of, as part of our growth. So we do have a tail, and the tail has an atom. That atom is, is from what we will be resurrected. In fact, this, in a way, uh, it, it uh, justifies the punishment or reward that a person would get in the, on the day of judgment. Because the person is getting resurrected from something within him or her. It is not, he, he or she is not getting resurrected or recreated brand new, to, so then it, it can be deemed as a totally different person. So in a way, it, is, uh, it establishes Allah's justice. So this atom has the tail, uh, this atom is in the, the part of the tail that we all have. And when will this resurrection happen? There is a beautiful hadith about that, narrated by Abu Hurairah There will be two surs that will be blown. And the time between the sur is 40. So the companion Abu Hurairah who narrated the hadith, did not remember whether it was 40 days or 40 months or 40 years. He just said it's 40. And after the first sur, everything gets destroyed except that Adam in the tail. And after the second sur, people start coming out from the ground as if the plants are growing from the ground. So there will be two sures. First sur is to just to destroy everything except the Adam that we all have. And the second sur is for us to come back for, to see the judgment, day of judgment. This hadith is in Bukhari. Number 4814 and 4935, narrated by Abu Hurairah. There is another hadith in which it states that the companions of the Prophet ask a follow up question. When Prophet said this, they ask a follow up question to the Prophet Ya Rasulullah, what is that thing in the tail? Because for them, it is not easy to digest the tail itself, and on top of that, you're talking about some atom which they can't imagine. So they ask, what is the thing in the tail? The Prophet ﷺ clarifies that each of us get recreated, resurrected from that atom. This hadith is in Ibn Hibban, volume number 13, hadith num uh, page number 275. You can compare this uh, process of the atom uh, into uh, something like uh, a zipped software. For us human beings, uh, we, so far we have achieved the zipping softwares, but it's easy, very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to zip hardware, which is us, zipped into that atom uh, size. So going back to this Quran verse number 23, uh, chapter number 23, verse number 100, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word barzakh to refer to the barrier, the screen between what we live, the world we live today, and the world we are destined for, that's the life in the Qabr. So this barzakh, the word barzakh, is also been used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Rahman. Allah says, Bainahuma barzakhu la Where Allah uses this word barzakh in a different context to talk about the, the invisible barrier that is uh, in, in between the seas. When the seas, although they look like they mingle together, they do not really mingle together. They do not mix together. Some part of the seas do have this invisible shield that separates them out. Their properties are totally separate when scientists have experimented, which is, which is one of the recent uh, uh, understanding. So this barzakh is also used in, when Allah SWT talks about this uh, life in the, in the grave, life after death. So continuing to understand more about what happens, what exactly happens after we all die. After the dead body is buried, two angels will reach the soul. And their appearance has also been described. Their color will be dark black, and their eyes will be blue. And one is called Munkar, the other, other is called Nakir. So their name is, names are Munkar and Nakir. So their appearance is somewhat frightening appearance. They're, they are in dark black uh, they, and their eyes are in blue color. This hadith is in Tirmidhi, hadith number 991, 
and also it's also in Ibn Hudaima. And when do these angels show up, Munkar and Nakir? They do show up as soon as the body is buried. Sooner, as soon that, such that the people, when the last people start to leave the graveyard, as such that the, 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 the body can even hear the last person leaving. And that moment, they'll show up. They, they show up without any delay. They show up right away. This hadith is in Bukhari, hadith number 1374 and 1338. So they come and they come to the soul, and then what do they do? They ask three questions to all of us, whether you are a believer or non-believer. And what are those questions? They show some form of the prophet of the person's ummah. For us, it will be Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they show that prophet and then ask that soul, do you recognize who this is? Do you know who this is? And then the soul, if they are believers, they will recognize the prophet. And this hadith about the first question is in Bukhari 1369, 4699, and also in Muslim 5117. And the second question will be, who is your God? Marrabuka, who is your God? And then the third question will be, Ma Dinuka. What is your belief? So there will be three questions. Do you know this person about the prophet? And then who is your God? And who is, what, what is your belief? These are the three questions that will be asked according to the authentic hadith. So what happens for those who answer right? For believers will be able to answer the right answer for the three questions. Though these are not technical questions, these are very simple, very fundamental questions, and only believers can a a answer it. Allah will program it such a way that even a non-believer wanted to answer it, or if they, even if they knew the answer, they wouldn't be able to answer it. So the believers will give the right answer, and what is the reward they get? So those who tell the right answer will get a space that is equivalent to 70 by 70 cubit. If, it, if you convert into the square feet size, it will be 105 feet by 105 feet. So it's such a huge space. It's a huge space just for one person for the, for the life in the graveyard, in the grave. And that space will be full of green. So it's so pleasant to the eyes. And that is a reward. That's one of the rewards for the believers. And this hadith about the space is in Muslim, hadith number 5115. Also, from another hadith, Prophet Wasallam has asked a specific dua to, broad, to broaden the cover for Abu Salama. And he also asks dua to brighten his cover. So from this, we understand that getting that broadened cover and getting a brightness in the cover is a reward for a believer. This hadith is in Muslim, hadith number 1528. From another hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has once came to know that the cleaning lady at the Masjid Nabawi was buried. She was dead and she was buried without informing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then asks the companion why did you bury her without telling me? The cover is full of darkness. And had you told me, I could have asked dua for her, and it could have been lit up with my dua. This hadith is in Muslim, hadith number 1588. So the person who sees all these nice perks, nice benefits, the believer who sees all these benefits, wants to go back and inform his family. He's so excited that he wants to go back and tell his family, look what I got. He's so excited. But then he will not be denied access to enter, the, enter into the world where he came from. So the angels will tell them to sleep like a newly wed person. So they'll ask, they'll put them to sleep 
because they keep asking to want, they wanted to go back, so they put them to sleep. Like how? Like a newly word person. Only the closest to the person can wake them up. Not anyone can access. Like how when, when a newly word person uh, comes to your house or uh, they stay in their house, uh, how, how will you treat them? They will try to not disturb them and you try to give them as much as rest as possible. That is how these uh, believers will get such a rest uh, throughout their stay in their life of Kabur. And uh, good soul will get to see Janna twice a day. That's another benefit. Seeing the Janna itself is a, so much of a pleasure. So the good soul will get to see the Janna two times a day. And this soul will get up only for the day of judgment. This hadith is in Bukhari, hadith number 1389. There is a subtle difference between uh, the life that is waiting for us after the day of judgment and there is a life that life that we just are talking about the life in the grave the difference is that the life in the grave is same for all believers as long as the believer believes in the fundamentals it is the same whereas the life after uh, the day of judgment there are different levels in the life after uh, the judgment uh, be it Jannah or be it Jahannam uh, hellfire, it's, it, there are different layers according to deeds. So we should always aim for doing more deeds and get to the top layer. But the top layer, the differentiation of layers is uh, in, uh, as, that comes after the, after the day of judgment. So the, as we have seen, the, the questions in the cover are not technical questions, are not too deep into the deeds. It's just the three fundamental questions about the belief. And uh, we might have heard uh, several different threatening stories or several different uh, uh, questions that might be asked, but those are not authentic according to the scholars. So, so far we have seen what happens to the believers in the cover. It is also important for us to understand what happens in the cover for non-believers so that may Allah protect us, we will not get into that state. Let's see that in the second part of the khutbah. Akkulikawli hada wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa lakum.